since his fame, he has gained a few names that struck fear into the hearts of the citizens of Whitechapel, the Whitechapel murderer in leather apron. These names chilled the spine of 19th century Great Britain. With his true identity still unknown, he was known to stalk prostitutes in the overpoverished district of London, which was Whitechapel in 1888. In all documents and case file names, the killer was referred to as the Whitechapel Murderer or Leather Apron. East End of London is where the majorities of the murders took place. The slums. Prostitutes were the main target of the slaughters as they were found with their throats cut pre-mortem. All victims in their organs ripped out and usually the body was mutilated by hacking away the face or limbs. With the first few murders becoming popular and new bodies being found, the police began to come up with theories of the killer and what he was and who he was. Due to the way the organs were removed from the body and how it was carried out, the police made the observation that the killer was most likely a doctor with surgical knowledge. With other victims, certain organs were specifically taken out, such as the heart. The canonical five were the famous five victims of the first few Ripper cases. All women were identified and found that they were all prostitutes that worked in the Whitechapel slums. Mary Ann Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Jane Kelly. All women were found with their bodies mutilated, some with their organs removed, and all with their throats slit. The murders were estimated to have been committed between the 31st of August and the 9th of November in 1888. The murders were never solved, and the events turned to legend. There were other murders such as Elizabeth Smith case and the Martha Tabern case. But let's go over the first few five victims. The most famous, Annie Chapman. Chapman's mutilated body was discovered in a doorway of a backyard of 29th Hanbury Street, Spitalfields. Her body was found at around 6 a.m. in the morning and her throat had been severed and she bled out immediately. Mary Ann Collins was found with her throat severed by two deep cuts. The whole abdomen had been slashed open with a knife and her uterus was removed from her body. Stride and Eddowes were both killed on the early Sunday morning of September 30th. Stride's body was discovered in Dutfield's yard in the early hours of the morning. One clear cut to the left side of her neck severed her main artery and she almost bled out immediately. Her abdomen was left uncut and later speculation pointed to the theory that Ripper was interrupted during his murder and fled leaving the body unmutilated. A little bit before Edo's body was discovered, a letter was forwarded to Scotland Yard, and the sender was Mr. Ripper. It was thought and considered to be a hoax, but in the letter it mentioned cutting pieces of a woman's ear, and then Edo's was found dead with parts of a ear cut. Then everyone knew the letter was real. Edo's body was found almost an hour later from Strides in Mitre Square. Her throat was severed and her stomach was ripped open by a long, deep, jagged wound. Her left kidney was removed along with some major parts of the uterus. Witnesses around the square claimed they saw Edo's walking with a fair-haired man with a shabby appearance. Both murders were recorded in the records as a double event. Kelly had a worse and more gruesome death than the rest, and I have the official photo of the body from the police. Kelly was disemboweled and mutilated in her own house on her bed. She was later found there and she was added to the Ripper investigation. Her throat had been severed down to her spine. Her abdomen was completely empty of organs and her heart was missing as well. Her face had been hacked away and it was unrecognizable to witnesses or police. The police did discover a pattern though, a pattern in the order and time the murders were carried out. It was always at night, near the weekend and usually near the end of the month. They knew it was a single killer, but could not discover a motive. 
and they never found him. Kelly was considered to be the last victim completing the famous five murders. Police made the speculation that the reason the slaughters had ended was because the mystery murderer was either jailed, died, imprisoned, or even immigrated. A year later, a series of similar murders began to appear. Four more victims had been killed. Whitechapel murder records state that the four victims were Rose Maylett, Alice McKenzie, and the Pynchon Street Torso, and Francis Coles. Even though the murders were later added to the Ripper investigation, some things about the four new murderers were different. Maylett was found strangled in Clark's yard. No sign of struggle was able to be found. They classified it as a part of the murders, but speculated she might have accidentally hung herself when she was drunk or committed suicide. The year was still 1888. Mackenzie was killed by her left carotid artery being severed. Mild bruises and cuts were found in her body, implicating that there had been a struggle. Her body was discovered in Castle Alley in Whitechapel. The pathologist that oversaw the autopsy, Thomas Bond, said through examination that he believed this was part of the Ripper case. The murders had started up again briefly. The year was 1889. The Pynchon Street torso was a headless and legless torso of an unidentified woman, possibly prostitute, that was discovered under a railway arch in Pynchon Street. The body was discovered on September 10, 1889, and was speculated that the murder had been done somewhere else and Pynchon Street was the dumping ground. This murder was then added to the Ripper case. Coles was found dead February 13th in the year 1891 under another railway arch, but at a different location, Swallow Gardens, Whitechapel. Her throat had been cut, but the body was not mutilated in any way. James Thomas Sadler had last seen reported with her and he was immediately arrested by police and charged with her murder. He was then discharged from the court due to lack of evidence. The date was March 3rd, 1891. Many other murders were alleged to be the result of Jack the Ripper, but with no solid evidence to connect them to Ripper. This is said to be one of the biggest manhunts in history, with over 2,000 people being interviewed, up to 300 people were investigated, and 80 people were detained, but they never caught the son of a bitch. The police were highly criticized for not being able to catch the killer, and that led people to write about it in papers and even write cartoons about it. Blind Man's Buff was a cartoon published in 1888 about the police's alleged incompetence and failure to catch the murderer, but no one ever knew what happened to Ripper or where he had gone, and we probably never will. Dear boss, I keep on hearing the police have caught me, but they won't fix me just yet. I have laughed when they look so clever and talk about being on the right track. That joke about the leather apron gave me real fits. I am down on whores and I shan't quit ripping them till I do get buckled. Grand work the last job was. I gave the lady no time to squeal. How can they catch me now? I love my work and I want to start again. You will soon hear of me with my funny little games. I saved some of the proper red stuff in the ginger beer bottle over the last job to write with, but it went thick like glue and I can't use it. Red ink is fit enough, I hope. <laughs> the next job I do, I shall clip the lady's ears off and send to the police officers just for jolly, wouldn't you? Keep this letter back till I do a little bit more work, then give it out straight. My knife's so nice and sharp and I want to get to work right away if I get a chance. Good luck. Yours truly, Jack the Ripper.
If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell beside it and select the box. That way you'll be notified for any new videos. Also be sure to look up other listen documentaries on our channel if you're looking for some chills down your spine. Check back on our channel routinely, for we upload every two to three days. Thank you for watching.